Hi, this is Alonzo Bowden. I want to welcome you to episode 288 of my podcast, Who's Paying Attention? Forgive the sound quality. I am uh, at a hotel room in St. Louis because I'm working. I'm actually out doing shows at Helium St. Louis. It's been a great weekend. And uh, yeah, it's it's the road. Uh, my last road trip for a while. I won't be back out till October, but I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. We have good socially distant crowds and uh, the creativity, man. I can't tell you how much I love being on the road. So this has been a busy week, hasn't it? Uh, we have the Democratic Convention and the NBA playoffs, and I am probably more interested in the playoffs. <laughs> I only say that because, you know, we know who the Democratic nominee is. It's it's Joe Biden with Kamala Harris and any listener to podcast knows how I feel about that, how upset I was at the negativity tossed at Kamala Harris when she was introduced as a vice presidential candidate. But we're going to try to move past that. And I'll take a look at this week. Um, the speeches were good. So Michelle Obama, uh, well, all of the speeches, I would say the, the one theme of the speeches was positivity, a lot of positivity. Michelle Obama, her speech was great. And once again, she said, the only thing I disagree with her about is when they go low, we go high. And she said, this time, when they go low, we go higher. Well, I don't know if that's the right strategy, but they've definitely gone lower. So uh, good for her. Uh, Barack's speech was typical Barack Obama. Uh, just it, it's such it's a joy to listen to him. It, it's so it's it reminds us all what a president sounds like. Well thought out, uh, intelligent, informed emotional at times, positive, the truth. And he definitely was, they were all throwing shade at, at uh, Trump. But, you know, he was, he talked about, you know, Trump did not grow into the job. He didn't, he's not good at what he does. And Barack said it in a much more eloquent way than any of us would have said it because he didn't cuss at all, which is kind of difficult when you talk about the orange baby handed bastard. So good for him. Kamala Harris, I found her speech interesting because to me it was kind of an introduction and background. She talked a lot about her mother and her family and growing up, you know, the the um, multiculturalism, you know, being Indian and Jamaican, which is also black and Asian, which is also going to be very confusing for the right wing racists. They're really not going to figure out how to insult her properly because of their, their confusion. Jamaican, is that the same as black? And then Asian, well, India, India is Asia? What the hell? What the hell is she? I don't know, some bitch. I don't like it. Meh. So, uh, you know, again, I'm a big supporter of Kamala Harris. I, I enjoyed hearing her speak. And Joe Biden, I thought he did well. Um, his He talked a lot about I think about bringing us together, which is which is a good message. He didn't mention Trump by name, which was something that was pointed out. I didn't even notice it, but it was pointed out afterwards. But he did talk about the incompetence in handling of uh, the coronavirus and so many other things. And he talked about an inclusive economy, not just an economy for the top 1% and Wall Street, et cetera, et cetera. So, Overall, I think it was a good convention. A lot of celebrities, a lot of um, personal stories that were were moving and touching. You know, this is the what the Democratic Party could be at its best. It it, it is more a party of the people, more understanding. And as a couple of people I've talked to said, you know, what Joe Biden showed something that Trump is incapable of: uh, empathy. Uh, a humanness to his speaking, to he, to who he is. And listen, I get it. I know he's a politician. I know it's talk and, and I know who he's been, et cetera. So I get all of that. But he did seem to, to show an empathy and an understanding that obviously Trump is completely incapable of. So I think, and it, you know, the, the ratings are in, right? The, the Democratic Convention 
was a big success. The The only thing odd about the speech is just like, it's like when I perform through a Zoom, I mean, they're, they're doing it to an empty room. So, so that was the one thing that was missing, that fire that would be there if there were thousands of delegates cheering them on. And, and it was even interesting in listening to Barack Obama seeming, seemingly pausing where there would normally be an applause break because there's nobody there. So there's no applause, but it was again, just great speeches. And yeah, my only, my only sadness when I hear Barack Obama speak is being reminded of how good we could be. And, uh, I'm, you know, I hope this works. I mean, I, I obviously I'm all in with Biden Harris. You've heard me say that from the beginning that hasn't changed. And, uh, yeah, that let let's hope this I don't know, let's hope this starts the ball rolling, you know. Um what's Baby Hands doing? Well, you know, Trumpy had to give his counter speeches which were nonsense, but his latest crusade, whatever. No. <laughs> his latest violation, I'll put it that way, violation is calling for a boycott of Goodyear tires. Uh, because there was a video at Goodyear. Goodyear did some, apparently Goodyear did some training that was uh, diversity training at work and, and you know, HR stuff. And, and one of the things they said was to stay away from wearing political things at work. And then one of the Goodyear plants, I guess, put up a thing saying that, uh, oh, <clears throat> here's what it says. Um, Goodyear corporation asked employees, quote, refrain from workplace expressions in support of political campaigning for any candidate or political party. So that means that uh, they don't want you wearing MAGA hats. And Trump, of course, lost his shit and said, well, you got to boycott Goodyear and Goodyear's, you know, anti-police and blah, 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 and all this bullshit. Um, First of all, a president is not supposed to call for a boycott against a private company. Okay, so that's the violation. And it's also just, it's so petty and so ridiculous. And, you know, an American president calling for a boycott of an American company that employs American workers, right? I mean, in Ohio, I, I mean, this is this was a swing state that got the idiot in the office or one of them. And remember, he was in the Ohio plants in America. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Boycott Goodyear because they won't wear my stupid fucking hats. Nice. Um, Steve Bannon was arrested. I, <laughs> it's just fun to say. I want to say it again. Steve Bannon was arrested. So th- this is interesting. This is uh, he was arrested because they started this GoFundMe, this stupid GoFundMe about build a wall. I think you remember that, the We Build a Wall GoFundMe campaign. We're going to pay for the wall out of our own money. They collected over $25 million through this GoFundMe for building a wall. So Bannon, a guy named Brian Colfedge, uh, Andrew but but a lot of Timothy Shea, what they did was that they, they, they made up a, a nonprofit. See, for GoFundMe, in order to get the money, if you don't know how it works, people pledge. They make donations. You use your credit card. You make a donation. And then you have to show GoFundMe that the money is being used for whatever you say it's going to be used for. And then GoFundMe charges the credit cards and disperses the money. So you have to have a goal and you have to have a reason. In other words, if you say... This is a GoFundMe to buy a wheelchair for somebody injured. And the wheelchair costs $750. Well, once the pledges reach $750, you show the money is going to buy the wheelchair. GoFundMe releases the money. If the pledges only reached like $400, GoFundMe would refund that to the people who donated because you didn't reach your target. So anyway, that's how it works. So what these guys did after saying repeatedly that the money's never going to be used for for personal gain. They created some shell companies, some nonprofits. They started billing, paying each other salaries, and they were using the money for things like um, 
trips, flying first class, uh, yachts, toys, luxury, upgrading their homes, this and that. When when Bannon was arrested, and it, this is beautiful, the it, it, idea of how corrupt and dirty these guys are. He was on a $115 million yacht owned by a Chinese billionaire. Yeah, so so America, America, make America great again. Ripping off and fleecing suckers. Now, they, to me, this is the same as the, the mega church guys, right? The guys who say, give money to my church to help Jesus because Jesus wants me to have a private jet and a couple of Bentleys and a big ass house. You know, it's the same thing. These idiots giving money to build a wall and um, using that money for their own slush fund. Everything. A great shopping list. The shopping list you wish you had. First class travel, paying off credit card debt, home renovations, a boat, luxury SUVs, golf cart, jewelry, cosmetic surgery. <laughs> yeah, that's where the money was going. So what's going to happen? Well, this is the, oh, by the way, Bannon, sixth person in Trump's, I don't know, what do you call it? Crew. Let's call them a crew. That's what criminals are, right? They're a crew. 6-1 in Trump's crew to be hit with federal charges. Roger Stone, Michael Flynn, Rick Gates, Manafort, Michael Cohen, and now we've got Bannon. So whereas other presidents have libraries and airports and streets named after him, Trump will just get a wing of a prison for his boys. And of course, he'll probably pardon him and blah, blah, blah. But he, you know, this is who Bannon is. Um, who should be in prison? Louis DeJoy. Louis DeJoy is the postmaster general who's nothing but a Trump campaign donor who was given the job. And as you know, he has been closing post offices, shutting down um, machinery, the, the, the sorting machines, and so on. There have been, been amazing stories from postal workers about this being done. Machines in California that sort 35,000 pieces of mail a day. I was reading a story about there was mail sitting around where rodents were eating, you know, people send fruit and and gifts and, you know, food things. Yeah, just sitting in the corner to, to for the rats to eat and, you know, mailboxes being shut down. Oddly enough, in a lot of blue states, Hmm, imagine that. So this is just a, a, a preemptive strike. And this is where I talk about Michelle saying that if they go low, we go high. See, this is how they go low. This is a preemptive strike against mail-in voting. Now, of course, there's a lot of action being done. But will these machines be put back in place? Will these mailboxes be put back in time for the November election? We don't know. The Democratic Congress is working on it and blah, blah, blah. But we don't know if it's going to get done. Me? I say they bring back some retired retired postal workers and let them go postal. Yeah, some of you aren't old enough to remember, but a lot of you do. There was a time when you didn't mess with the post office. You know why? Because they were armed. They were the ones who'd snap. Postmaster General tried his shit. He'd got his head blown off. I'm not saying he should get his head blown off. I'm just saying there was a time you didn't mess with postal workers. And we might have to go into the retiree file and bring back some of these. Okay. Um... So we don't know what's going to happen now. You know, the the um, postmaster general says he'll stop, but he has no intention of replacing the sorting machines, mailboxes, and the rest of the infrastructure that they're tearing down. So I don't know how this is going to play out, but this is just an example of voter suppression. And this is why when they say, you know, when they go low, you go high. Like, no, you have to fight them in the trench. This is... It's the kind of shit that the Republican Party does that the Democratic Party doesn't figure out. And the Democratic Party has to watch this and have to figure this out and they have to get on top of it when it happens. It's too late now. It's suddenly you just see trucks of loads of mailboxes going away. From where? From Democratic places, from, from lower income places, from working class neighborhoods, from neighborhoods of color, from places where obviously they weren't going to be voting Republican. Okay? So... Learn to fight. Um, speaking of Trumpies, 
<laughs> and just because I enjoy this, what, what, you know, here's the thing. They're dumb. I don't care what level, you know, whether it be Bannon and his crew running this fraud and getting caught or Marco Rubio, who decided that Eva Longoria was a good person to attack after the, uh, Dem after her speaking at the Democratic Convention, you know, because she's a celebrity and what do actors know about politics and celebrities and this and that? Well, here's the thing, uh, Marco, your fearless leader. Yeah, Trump. Yeah, he's a reality star. OK, that's the first thing. Also, uh, Ms. Longoria worked her way up to where she is. She's an actress and, and that's a grind and she got roles and she moved up and she had the big hit TV show, Desperate Housewives, which is probably the, what made her a household name and made her very famous. She speaks out for a lot of Latinx uh, causes. She works. She shows up. You you are an asshole. You're a, you're a poor senator. You don't get things done and you should probably, you know, just Keep your mouth shut in these situations because the Latin people don't support you because you don't support them. They do, on the other hand, support her. Oh, by the way, working Latin women. What about AOC? Yeah, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. See, she was a bartender. So you, you have the thing of you don't like her because she was a bartender, which is working blue collar, whatever you want to call it. And then you don't like Eva Longoria because she's an actress, which has glamour involved. And this is it. So what's it going to be, Marco? What's it going to be? I think it's just a lot of women turned you down and you got a little beef against Latin women. I don't know. I don't know what the hell your problem is. But uh, yeah, don't talk about don't insult someone who worked their way up and is in the celebrity business when your leader is a multimillionaire who inherited the money from his father and had a reality show. I'm just saying, keep your mouth shut. Don't call attention to yourself because then people call you stupid like I'm doing right now. Jack off. <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, speaking of celebrities, just on a side note, because I enjoy it. Lori Laughlin got two sentences, two months in jail for her part in a college cheating scandal with her kids and her husband got sentenced to five months. And a hundred fifty thousand dollar fine, which is pennies to them, but I hope they serve the time. It'd be nice to know that you had to do actually do two months in jail for your crime. So now I want to talk about sports because I mentioned the NBA playoffs. I mentioned the NBA playoffs, and I want to talk about it. Shut up and dribble. Um, that was. Uh, I can't even remember her name, the Fox News host. But anyway, she told LeBron he should shut up and dribble. Well, here's why athletes, in particular NBA players, will not shut up and dribble, nor should they. Masai Ujiri is, uh, Masai Ujiri is the president of the Toronto Raptors basketball team. He's a black man. The Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship last year as he was going to the court to celebrate with the team. This uh, security guard who was an off-duty um, sheriff deputy pushed him. He stood in his path. He pushed him back, physically pushed the man in the chest. Um, a jury reached for his credential. The guy pushed him again and... Then, you know, the, the credential came out. He said, I am president of the Raptors. Why are you pushing me? And he went on to celebrate with his team. Now, <laughs> amazingly, the sheriff's deputy tried to sue him. But of course, now the body cam footage comes out. And what Azuri said is absolutely true. This guy was trying to push him, not trying, this guy, <clears throat> excuse me, pushed him a couple of times. And it's quite simply the case of because he was black. What's the proof? A couple of white reporters said that they walked right onto the court. One said he didn't even have his credential and he walked onto the court. Same basketball court, same game, same security. White man in a suit walks onto the court. Black man in a suit gets pushed to the side. You push the wrong guy. This guy isn't some 
broke guy who can't fight you. This man has the support of the Raptors and the entire NBA along with his personal wealth. So he can hire lawyers. And of course, it's come out now. The body cam footage has come out. Amazingly, the sheriff's department still supports the cop. If you see this video, it's obvious what's going on. They still support him. This is why players will not shut up and dribble. Other examples of racism and ignorance in the NBA, and, it, and it's really fascinating how dumb people can be. So an NBA freelance photographer, a guy named Bill Baptist, who is inside the bubble, and it ain't easy to get inside the bubble during these playoffs and all, but it's his job taking pictures. He posts on his Facebook page or Twitter page, I'm not sure which one, Joe and the Ho, uh, a campaign poster about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, referring to Kamala Harris, of course, as the Ho. So it looks like the Biden-Harris poster, but instead it says Joe and the Ho. Yeah, I should say former freelance photographer because he's gone. Now, um, <laughs> Jim Fock, John Fock, I'm sorry, another former NBA employee. He was the announcer for the Hornets, but then he tweeted during a Utah-Denver game, the Utah versus Niggers game, because uh, Denver, the team name is the Nuggets. He referred to him as the Niggers. Then, of course, he tried to say it was a mistake and it was autotype and autocorrect. Here's a problem. People tried every spelling of Nuggets possible. No spelling of Nuggets autocorrects to Niggers. The only time Niggers would be an autocorrect is if you use the word so much that your phone, your Siri, your memory in your phone, etc., saw that as the spelling you wanted. We've had that experience. If you use autotype, you know, if you keep writing a word, it will automatically put in that word. So one way or the other, his phone meant to type, was meant to type, did mean to type, typed itself, which is all bullshit. He typed niggers, got caught, fired. You're the announcer for the Charlotte Hornets, a basketball team owned by Michael Jordan. What the hell is wrong with you? Tom Brendan, announcer for the Reds. You, you really look up this video. This video, it is fascinating. Look up Tom Brennan. Look up Reds, uh, announcer, fired, whatever. So it's, it's a brief snippet of him between innings. And he s says something about uh, fag planet or fag capital of the world, something like that. Then it goes into the game. He's announcing the game as he apologizes. He even announces a home run in the midst of his apology, saying that the other announcer is going to take over the rest of the game. He's going to be leaving. He says, um, whoa, there's a deep fly ball and it's gone. And that's it. That, you know, then they always put in that thing of that's not me. That's not me. These remarks aren't me. That's not me. Yeah, it was you. We heard you say it. It was you. It is you. These remarks don't come out of the ether. They don't come out, out of nowhere into your brain. Nobody took control of you in that moment. Okay. That doctor from Houston, her midnight demons didn't make you say it. When you're sitting there talking about uh, planet fag or, or fag capital of the world, or you're calling a basketball team niggers, or you're calling... Uh, Kamala Harris, vice presidential candidate, ho. Okay, that's you doing it. Own it. Own it. If you're going to do it, fucking own it and say you did it. That's not me. I don't know. Yeah, of course you're going to lose your job. Yeah, of course somebody's going to hear it. Guess what, assholes? It's the internet. That's how it works. Finally, and this is another one that if you see this guy's picture, boy, when they say a picture tells a thousand words you really if you see this guy's picture which you probably won't because it, the tweet's been deleted so robert j o'neill uh has been banned robert j o'neill has been banned for life from delta airlines because he posted a picture of him sitting on a delta flight with this stupid ass smug smile saying uh, i'm not a pussy you know, because he's not wearing a mask. I'm not a pussy. This is what's amazing about this. Apparently, this guy was part of the mission 
that killed bin Laden. Now, he he claims it was him that killed bin Laden. It could have been. I don't know. It could have been. But how insecure are you? How weak are you? If you're part of SEAL Team 6, if you're a Navy SEAL, you really need to not wear a mask to prove your manhood, to say you're not a pussy. So he did this, and then, of course, the tweet was deleted, and uh, Alyssa Milano had the, the great response. Um, Alyssa Milano tweeted, you do realize that you may be asymptomatic and give the virus to other people that could potentially kill him. I think that makes you a sociopath, but this is the great part. She said, besides, pussies are actually so strong, we can deliver human beings out of them. <laughs> No, sir, you are not a pussy. You're not strong enough to be a pussy. Then, and this to be, this was the most pussy move. He says, my wife deleted the tweet. <laughs> yeah, he put, I didn't delete the tweet. My wife did. Now, what's more pussy of a move than saying, well, I didn't delete it. My wife did. Then, of course, he put up the whiny one. I've been banned from Delta for life for a picture. Yes, you've been banned from Delta for life because... You admitted to violating their rules and you showed a picture of you doing it. See, that's what's called stupid. Now, this guy, he could kill me, no doubt. He's a SEAL, Navy SEAL. This guy could snap my neck in a minute. I'm sure of it. He's trained to do that thing, that sort of thing. He may have done it. Are you a pussy? Yes, you're a pussy. You Because your your manhood is tied to wearing a mask. And then when you get caught doing it, you don't own it. You actually bring your wife into it. My picture with my tweet was taken down because of my wife. That's a pussy move, sir. I'm sorry. So I, well, you're an insult to pussies, but you, you're a pussy move. <sighs> That's it. That's all I got. Clippers are up 2-1 in the playoffs. I'm enjoying that. Um, I don't know where you are. Enjoy the rest of the summer. We got a couple of weeks left before Labor Day, before summer officially ends. If your kids got to go to school, I hope they're safe and, and on and on and on. We're still a mess as a country. We're still not handling the coronavirus, but we're doing the best we can, I guess. I am so happy to be performing live. Once again, thank you to everyone in Tampa who came out last week, in St. Louis who came out this week, and the support you guys give me online and so on. And, and people actually thank me for getting up and doing live comedy. Are you kidding? It's my life's blood. I need to do it. So thank you for letting me do it. And thank you for listening to this podcast. This is Alonzo Bowden asking who's paying attention and saying it's you. Next weekend, I'm back on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. So I'll hit you up from the radio waves on NPR. Thank you. Thank you.